Hi, this is Sobden Bhartia. In this special edition of TFIRE, let's talk for Strapi Conf. We have with us today Sam Bhagwat, co-founder and chief strategy officer at Gatsby. Sam, it's great to have you on the show. Pleasure to be here, Sobno. First of all, tell me a bit about the company. So Gatsby started as an open source project in 2015 created by my co-founder, Kyle Matthews, um, as a JavaScript framework uh, to build websites. Um, it continued to gain popularity over the, uh, over the next couple of years. And so in uh, 2017, we decided to create a company and, uh, and raise venture funding. Now today, um, we're 50 folks, We've uh, um, and Gatsby is both an open source framework used by uh, tens of thousands, tens of, of thousands of developers every week um, to build websites, um, as well as a company um, as well, behind it um, with uh, G- providing Gatsby Cloud, which is the best way to build um, and deploy Gatsby websites. Let's talk about uh, your thoughts and your opinion on uh, Content Mesh. Uh, talk a bit about how how uh, things have changed because when we look at headless CMSs and when we look at Jamstack or Strapi, so so let's let's uh, talk about how things are changing because you know we it, it may not be applicable in this context but you know we talk about low code we could or no code we talk about uh, removing all the overhead so let's talk about content mesh this is a really exciting kind of trend that's been happening over the last few years um, and and content mesh is really more just a name for what's going on. Uh, you can see in a, in a lot of the different, so, you know, in the old world um, of LAMP stack era CMSs like WordPress and Drupal, the CMS itself kind of packaged all the functionality that you would need, you know, analytics, uh, forms, a component library, you know, sort of like AB a- a- testing, um, search, and, and these would all be kind of be in the CMS. But and you can still go with LAMP stack era CMSs that offer that functionality, but the challenge is that that functionality is now sort of out of date, right? For each of these kind of separate needs, um, you have best of, I, I, you know, this word best of read, you know, kind of hated on one, one level, but <laughs> kind of descriptive on the other level, but you have these best of breed sol- um, point solutions. So if you want, if you want a open source headless CMS, you know, you can go with Strapi. If you want something more cloud-based, you can go with Contentful. If you want uh, A-B testing, you can go with Optimizely. If you want search, you can go with Algolia. Um, if you want, you know, analytics, um, you know, there's a whole sort of wide variety of, of options there. Uh, but the the tricky part, right, as a as a development team building a website, is then it doesn't then the tricky part moves to integrating those pieces together, and that's why we call it the content meshes. Is Gatsby as a framework sort of helps you, you know, take all these best of breed solutions and sort of glue them seamlessly into an extremely fast performant website um, that users love. What I also understand is that, uh, and when you say things, it does make a sense because when I look at uh, content mesh, I also kind of compare it with service mesh in the cloud native world that is happening. And yes, if you're running a uh, a website, no matter what you're doing. Yes, you. there are different, like if you're e-commerce side, your content side, you know, there are so many things. And then what you're doing is more or less like as a patchwork, right? Okay, the user is not exposed to the patchwork, but there is a lot of patchwork going on there. Exactly. Just to give an example, a lot of folks, since you mentioned e-commerce, a lot of folks that are using Shopify in a sort of decoupled headless setup, so they're using Shopify as an API, but then they're using, you know, Gatsby as, uh, uh, um, as a way to... Uh, build their, their website, what they find is that they actually have an additional need, for example, for structured content. Uh, so they, they find that Gatsby is not very good for like building, or excuse me, they find that like Shopify is not very good for building a blog and blog functionality. They prefer to, or, or like generating landing pages. So they, they look then to something like Strapi um, to store sort of generic structured content. And so now, you know, even just for sort of content, you've got Shopify and you've got like a Strapi or, uh, you know, in addition to um, in addition to all the other kind of services they may be using for analytics or search or other pieces of the puzzle, which is like, it's great, you know, on, on one level, because what it means is that from a from a business user perspective, people can use the tool that best suits their needs. The, the tricky part, on the other hand, is that um, is that it makes it difficult, uh, right, for for developers to then glue the things together. And that's where kind of Gatsby comes in to make that integration piece easy. Can you uh, talk about uh, a bit uh, about how uh, in this changing landscape, or not 
it, there's nothing new. It's just like looking differently at things, basically uh, trying to pa uh, do the patchwork. How does Gatsby and Strapi help customers? I think you are also abstracting a lot of things, not exposing. So talk about how you're making it easy for them so that they can focus on the content, not about all the plumbing. I think you know the trend of API-driven uh, CMS is, is just a great, um, is a great step forward in that uh, direction in general. Um, because what, what that lets you do is optimize the experience uh, for a content editor of, of creating structured schema, right? I think, you know, as, as developers, we get very used to thinking about our database schemas, for example, and like, oh, you know, uh, the, you know, this plan should have, you know, two subscriptions or like a user should be associated with these accounts or, you know, all the business logic we have to put together and content editors, right, are no different. Like they're, they're thinking about, well, you know, an author, a post needs to have an author and, you know, the landing page needs to have a section and the section needs to have a, um, it needs to have multiple images. And so being able to, being able to create structured content in a, in a, um, in an easy, straightforward way is a huge sort of, and, and just focus on that experience is a huge step forward for API um, driven back a API driven CMS is like Strapi in general with Strapi in specific, uh, you know, uses with Gatsby, I would say one of the really great things about, um, you know, if you look at sort of the range of API driven CMS is, you know, you can, some of these like sort of like legacy lamp stack CMS is like WordPress and Drupal, you can run them in headless mode and the benefits that you get there, right. Are, are that um, you have uh, you sort of have uh, customizability because they're open source and then you also have low cost because you know you can host it wherever uh, on the other hand you have sort of cloud first CMSs um, and the benefits there is they're extremely scalable um, and they also kind of give you a great user interface and, and sort of the promise of something like Strapi is that it can provide those kind of, those two benefits together um, being both you know low cost customizable as well as like great user interface scalable. Uh, now let's uh, look at things from a user spec perspective. You know, uh, when uh, I think of a headless CMS, I'm like, oh Jesus, how am I going to make it work? So so let's talk about uh, 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 the workflow, the ex user experience, all the things that we traditionally do in the traditional CMS versus, uh, you know, head headless CMS, where you're looking at a combination of Strapi and GetSP stack. In terms of that integration and in the stack, one of the trickiest problems, or sort of like one of the tricky things when using a headless CMS, and you know, is like for every page that you build, like how do I get the data to this page, and how do I do that in a performant way? Um, so you know, the first step, you you know, okay, I'm going to set up a headless CMS. I'm going to kind of put my content in it. I'm going to do my content architecture. You know, similarly, um, you know, similarly on the other side. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do the uh, I'm going to do the architecture from a, um, from a service perspective in, in terms of like how do I think about all the different pieces of the puzzle from a website uh, standpoint and then like you know and then the, then when you're actually going about building the project on a page by page basis like how do you get the data from the headless CMS to uh, uh, to the system like Gatsby that you're using. And, and the great thing that Gatsby does, for example, to make this s easy and straightforward, is we have out-of-the-box integrations with Strapi and with you know a number of other headless um, headless CMSs. Uh, we have a plugin ecosystem with over 700 kind of integrations, over 2,700 plugins, um, that essentially exposes all the data within Strapi through a GraphQL API um, to make it easily queryable by pages and components when, uh, when you're building them in your UI. Uh, and this is like we've heard folks like, you know, we've heard folks be super enthusiastic about this, both from like, oh, wow, I actually learned GraphQL through using Gatsby um, or from a like, wow, I don't have to like learn a whole lot of APIs. All I have to do is like, you know, act, sort of easily query data, be able to introspect the data that I have using tools like Graphical and then um, and then uh, uh, build, you know, be able to easily pull it into the the, the pages and, and 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 components that I need in a performant way. Because of this pandemic that we are going through, uh, of course, web has become the front uh, uh, fr front for a lot of businesses. Even my grocery store, uh, it was brick and mortar uh, Indian store. Now they are offering everything through through websites. So there is a spike because businesses are moving. Uh, how is kind of Strapi and get us be like? right place at the right time uh, to help your customers quickly move uh, and start serving their customers? Yeah. So, you know, like, like you highlighted, there's really been an explosion of e-commerce at the 
um, you know, we, we can, we've all watched those graphs of the amount of um, transaction volume being done on e-commerce kind of growing over the course of 2020 and into 2021. Um, and, and, you know, what that means is that like there's, you know, there's a whole sort of like wave of companies that are just starting as well as those that have started are growing very rapidly. And, and they're, um, and so, so like, I think there's kind of like two kinds of, when, when we think about e-commerce, there's kind of two kinds of e-commerce that we should think about, right? There's folks who are sort of like the mom and pop shops, um, you know, and the, the mom and pop shops, the main important thing for them is they're like, they want something that just like works out of the box. And so they're going to use something, they're going to use something like a Shopify, just full stack. And then if you think about like a, a vendor that wants a, a customized sort of custom experience, they want the experience in their website to really highlight the product. Um, then they're going to, what they're going to do is they're going to look to the best stack that has the sort of like the best performance allows them to put in the, the sort of the best modules um, to really um, optimize their experience. Um, and so decoupled um, and, and headless e-commerce is becoming a bigger and bigger thing for those reasons among you know, among e-commerce vendors that are trying to really give their users the same kind of experience um, that they would have um, being able to feel a product in a store like and, and get that kind of tangible, aha, I, I, I understand what this means for making considered purchases. And, and so like in terms of a web stack, that, that makes them, you know, hey, we're going to do Shopify, but in a decoupled st state, we're going to use a Gatsby, we're going to use a Strapi, um, and, and start putting these pieces together to create sort of a, a next generation e-commerce experience. Sam, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not just topic, get SB, but also how things are changing, how you're helping content creator marketers to to you know to le leverage these technologies and serve their customers. And uh, good luck for the event, and I look forward to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Uh, Swapnil, it was a real pleasure being here. Um, great to have a conversation, and uh, looking forward to it. <laughs>